Alright, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me for another live stream. This is take two because obviously the first take of this didn't go particularly great. I'm going to be honest with you, but in this video you guys are free to submit your questions and comments as I go through this. I was going to film this traditionally as in not do it live, but I figured what the heck. I got some time this afternoon and this evening, so I uh, wanted to go ahead and go live here so many of you can join me as, uh, as you wish. Alright, Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at my collection of N-scale heavy equipment and construction vehicles. Now, please bear in mind that uh, this is a series that I'm just starting out with. So these are models in various stages of completion, like the cement mixer, for example, is nowhere near finished and completed model. But wanted to get this out there and uh, kind of show you what I've got going. Hello, Mr. J. I see that you are the first one in the room. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. So let's just go ahead and get started again. Leave your comments or questions down in the chat section. I will periodically uh, check that out as soon as uh, I can throughout the video. Okay, so the first two, we have a GHQ, which is a white metal kit of the Ford L9000 concrete truck. And on the right, we have a Showcase Miniatures um, dump truck, single axle dump truck. Now the Showcase Miniatures stuff, you're going to see quite a few of those, especially with the trucks. They're really, really kits to do they're really user friendly and uh, i enjoy them quite a lot and they're not too expensive uh you can go on their website showcase miniatures and check them out that's where i got all of mine from they used to be on ebay i'm not sure if they're still on ebay but there you go um another person that's joined the room hello tactical thank you for joining so anyway there's the international dump truck and the ford concrete mixer again in various stages of completion We'll stick with the theme of showcase miniatures with the low boy trailer that I have. Now this one obviously is in a loading mode with the uh, gooseneck attached. You can see here the uh, simulated wood decking that they include, which looks really good on these. Turned out great. So that's the low boy trailer. We'll put a piece of heavy equipment up here just for size reference. There you go. So that's what that one looks like. Okay, moving on. Here is the uh, gooseneck, by the way, for those that want to see it. There you go. Got a couple more trailers to show you. This is a, I believe this one is the uh, 3D printed one. There's the 3D printed three axle low boy trailer. Um, this one's all right. There's nothing too particularly outstanding about it. It's pretty generic. Um, but if you have larger pieces of equipment, you can use that one. And then here's another GHQ kit. This is an older low boy, older style low boy. That deck is supposed to be completely wood, but obviously I have not done that yet. But that one is uh, is one that looks good behind a tractor, such as seen here. This tractor is a Volvo tractor, also from uh, Showcase Miniatures. And the grill, if you look at the grill, the exhaust, the mirrors on most of these trucks, they are all um photo etched pieces like stainless steel pieces that they include in the set which honestly I, I think is a nice touch and i wish more kits would do that so there is that one got a couple more trucks to show you here's my old kenworth heavy haul tractor and an even older kenworth heavy haul tractor that one's from showcase miniatures i think this one is from ghq but i'm not sure this i've had this for years that was like my very first N scale model that I ever bought back when, um, back before I was serious about doing anything in the scale. So let's go ahead and check chat out. Uh, okay, so our first question: How much does licensing affect the cost of a model? Tremendously, uh, is the answer. The short answer to that question: Most scale models that are done, particularly in the trucking and construction industry, um, it is usually the the licensee that's paying for a lot of the tooling and requesting the model. That's not always the case, but that is usually the case um, because the tooling for a new casting is extremely ridiculous. Uh, very, very expensive to do. So to answer your question, without going into this, I can make a whole video about this, but without going into illicit detail, the uh, licensing accounts for a tremendous amount of the cost of the model. All right, thanks for the question, by the way. Arthur says hello. Hello, Arthur. Thank you for joining us. If you are just joining us, I see that a few more people have joined the room. Uh, I don't think this is going to be one of my more popular videos. I know a lot of people aren't really into N scale. I'm not really into it. It's the scale I care the least about. Uh, however, it has been fun to pick up these throughout the years, and I've done 
couple handfuls here within the past couple months. Just something to do during the off season. So there you go. Okay, I showed you my tractors and my trailers. How about a dump truck? Now this model right here, again, is a showcase miniature model. And this one, this very model right here, actually won the N-Scale Choice Award for Model of the Year. I think it was last year or something. So that gives you an idea how popular it is. It is a Kenworth dump truck. Obviously a, a Tritum dump truck with the third axle raised in the up position. And I glued mine in a dumping position because I typically have this behind my asphalt paver, which again you will see here in just a couple of minutes. All right, moving along. We have the Atlas Ford L900. This comes in a two-pack. Now, one thing I don't like about this is that they don't give you mirrors. The set comes with these two tractors. However, it does not come uh, with, with any uh, mirrors, which is annoying. I feel like they could have included those accessories at little to no cost, but... It is, a, it is very inexpensive, this this Atlas two-piece set for these 1984 Fords. Um, but again, I think it detracts a lot by not having the mirrors. All right, let's go back to chat momentarily. I see a few questions have popped up while I'm going on and on. All right, um, do you have a preference? Resin or diecast? Diecast absolutely is my preference. Uh, I started collecting the Diecast Masters transport line because of your videos. I absolutely love them. Well, thank you, Tactical. I really appreciate that. Do you have a preferred online seller? Uh, I have several that I would recommend and put my name by. Um, the Construction Diecast Store is one. Um, done a lot of business with them over the years. I would also say that if you deal with anything with Buffalo Road Imports, BRI, they're very reputable, honest. Um, 3000 Toys is another good one. And then if you focus in on, you know, like smaller models, like, for example, any of the Weiss Brothers models, get directly from ricebrothers.com, weissbrothers.us. Uh, again, another great pairing to deal with. So to answer your question, I have a lot of preferred ones, uh, but an even longer list of ones that uh, I would not recommend, which I'm not going to go into in this live stream. So there you go. Okay, let's get something new on the table. This is probably my favorite N-scale model that I have. This is a Trainworks, with an X, uh, Kenworth dump truck. These are extremely expensive. Anything that Showcase Miniatures does is crazy expensive. But you are, you get what you pay for, in other words. So you can open up the hood and see the, the motor inside. The dump box does raise and lower. Obviously, the tailgate opens. This does come with mirrors. I just have not glued them on. So if you have the means and maybe N-Scale is the only thing you focus in on and you want trucks, whether it's vintage trucks or modern day trucks, look up Trainworks. Just be aware that A, they're hard to get, and B, you're going to pay a ridiculous amount of money. So there you go. Okay, next up, I have a white Caterpillar service truck. Another kit by Showcase Miniatures. The kit is just for the service truck, uh, but I did some custom decals. The kit does come with all these accessories you see in the back, with the exception of the two tires. I added those. Uh, but the compressor, the tanks, uh, the acetylene tank and torch, all that stuff, even the little cooler in the back, that all comes with the kit. So um, if you're looking for a service truck, I would recommend that one. And then if you want what I call pilot trucks, which are escort trucks, or just some pickups, then you can't go wrong with these. These are also by Atlas. These are 1990s Fords. Uh, this is, I believe this is an F-350. and That's an F-250 extended bed, obviously. You can get these in a variety of different colors and railroad liveries. So let's say you have a Santa Fe layout. Um, you can get these in BNSF or whatever. So they, uh, there's, there's plenty to choose from there. All right, enough of trucks. What do you say we get into some construction equipment? I hesitate to say the next handful or so of models I'm going to show you are N-Scale. Some of them are passable, but these are actually part of Ertl's um, micro construction series from the early 1990s. Actually, you guys haven't seen it yet because I haven't uploaded, uploaded the video, but I filmed it today. I did an unboxing and review of these models, so you can look forward to that in the future. Anyway, this is a scraper. There is nowhere on here that is cat. There's no uh, cat logos. There's no machine specification numbers like for example maybe a 611 or a 613 but they were licensed by cat they were produced in the early 1990s when Ertl had a uh, 
had a big agreement with uh, with Caterpillar. So there you go. All right, I need to get caught up on chat, so I apologize about that. Let me get caught up. I bought my first gear model, the Kenworth Rotator Tow Truck, and I have to say I wasn't that impressed for what it cost. Sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. Uh, Mr. J, I collect mostly 164 scale. I appreciate your reviews on all the scales you do. Thank you. I appreciate that, too. I always try and keep it interesting. Uh, Zelda says, what's up? Good morning from Indonesia. Thank you. I'm doing well. What's up with you? Thanks for joining the chat. Uh, and, yeah. All right. So, we're caught up on chat. Let's take a look at some more models. Here's the bulldozer that comes in that Ertl set. Very little functionality on here. And, again, you guys are going to eventually see that video that I filmed today. But... They are passable for N scale. So I would say this is probably a D6H if I had to take a guess. You'll see this later in this video. But here is a proper N scale bulldozer. This is a D8H. So a dozer from the early 1970s and mid-1970s. And if you look close, they scale out to be about right. It's pretty darn close. Okay, next up. Challenger tractor. Uh, I would say that this is probably closer to a Challenger 65 because it doesn't have the high drive sprocket, which would be on the 45s, etc., etc. <coughs> Pardon me. Excuse me. I don't know where it is about about where it is where you guys are, but here in Cincinnati, this is like the worst time of year to live here. The freaking ragweed and um, all the allergies are just absolutely awful. And cool cool fact, I didn't know this till I moved here, but evidently Cincinnati is the... Uh, Cincinnati, Ohio is the allergy capital of the world. So don't live here if you have asthma or breathing problems or anything else, um, all of which I have. Anyway, here's the wheel loader. Again, no numbers or anything on here. I would say this is probably a 980 to a even a 950 maybe it's passable for. But this actually does have some decent functionality. You can raise the loader arms. You can dump the bucket. You can do a lot of fun things with this. And I haven't really decided. Maybe I'll get your guys' input on it, but... Um, I thought about doing decals for these, figuring out what they scale out most closely to, and then making some custom decals for these and putting them on. I'm not sure how that's going to go, but something I, I want to do long term. All right, let's finish up the last two. Articulated dump truck, possibly a D25D, maybe, because it's a single axle. Working feature on here is the dump box. There you go. All right, and then last but not least, what everybody is probably the most interested in is the excavator. So the boom will go up and down, but the stick doesn't go out or in, and the bucket can curl in, and it does rotate 360 degrees on the chassis. So you guys can check that out while I consult the chat, because I'm behind again. All right, Zelda says he loves my unboxing Matchbox videos. Thank you. I enjoy doing them as well. Uh, Tactical says, I like 118 scale classic cars and 150 scale semi trucks. I'm with you on the 150 scale semi trucks. I do pretty much nothing in 118 scale unless, unless it's cat. Uh, it was 71 degrees and sunny here in Fort Worth. Nice. Very, very jealous. Very jealous about that. Uh, Mr. J says, interesting. Didn't know that about Cincinnati. I didn't either until uh, a doctor told me. All right. Uh, next comment. Good evening, Tom. Glad you got those diecast construction equipment, some jump trucks, concrete mixers, etc. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm glad I have them too. All right. Let's keep going here. Believe it or not, we are making progress. Remember, I mentioned that a lot of these that you'll see are work in progress. This is another example. This is a GHQ uh, forklift. It is based off the Caterpillar V80E from the 1980s. I have this exact model on HO scale, and I did the decals for it. It turned out great. Um, this in N scale was a nightmare because all the small pieces were so small that it's. this is a very difficult kit to do. You can kind of see that the the uh, cage or the, the cab portion, if you want to call it, the ROPS, I guess, would be the, the technical word. I don't know why my camera is flipping out at the moment. I apologize, guys. Whoa. <laughs> there we go. Uh, that's what happens when you do this live. Um. I would not recommend this. It's not enjoyable. It's not fun. I didn't enjoy it. I doubt I'll even finish this model. All right, one I do plan on finishing. This is a pipe layer. Now, it doesn't say anywhere on here that this is Cat or International Harvester or whatever. I think it scales out and looks pretty close to a Cat uh, 572C. So um, that's the decals and such I'm going to do. Pardon me while I figure out why the camera is freaking out. There we go. I think it had something to do with chat or something being up on the screen at the same same time, so I apologize about that. 
Got to work out all the kinks. Have a new phone. Don't know how to master the camera yet, obviously. So we'll get there. I appreciate your patience. Anyway, that is the uh, the pipe layer that I have. Now, it is not finished. Obviously, I haven't done anything with the lines in the back that I need to do for the winches. Uh, but I did make up some custom decals, including the grill, the Chevron logos, the Caterpillar logo. Those are all custom decals. The Pac-Man logo on the back. So, not bad for a 1 to 1 60th scale pipe layer. All right. This started life as a John Deere keychain. I cut the keychain off the back of it, and uh, you can probably see that here because I tried to match the paint so you couldn't tell. Um, but this is a John Deere wheel loader, obviously. No idea what this would scale out to be. I'm not an expert on John Deere. I don't claim to be. Possibly a 544. I don't know. Somewhere along those lines. And then here's the same thing with the cat one. This is a this is actually pretty heavy. It's metal. This is a cat keychain that was pewter. Obviously, I, I primed it and painted it and put some decals on it for a 980M cat loader. And again, still work in progress, nowhere near finished. Okay. Moving on. This is a Norscott collect and play from back in the day. Uh, backhoe loader. These collect-and-play models could be found anywhere. Like, you could literally go to your local Walmart back in the day, and you'd find Norscott models like this. Um, honestly, I I would love to see Diecast Masters do that same thing. They're starting to get in more hobby shops, which is good to see. Like, if you have a Hobby Town USA, uh, and you've been in there lately, you'll find all the RC products by Diecast Masters. You'll find the 164 scales, and obviously you'll find a lot of the 187 or HO scale models in the train department. Um, but that's a dedicated hobby store. I would really like to see these be more mass, they call it mass market, be out in the mass markets, like a Target, Walmart, Meyer, etc. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll see that happen one day. That's at least my dream, anyway. Okay, here is a Diecast Masters 315 excavator, as well as a 320 Next Gen. Now the 320 is an awesome model. Um, it is, as, as is the 315, the 320, both of these are actually 1 to 1 60th scale models. And they scale out very, very well. So if you're looking for an excavator, an end scale, and you don't want to pay an arm and a leg, absolutely, I would recommend one of these. They're great. Uh, the boom and stick has full functionality. The bucket curls in. Really, the only thing that doesn't work is the tracks, obviously, because it's so small. All right. Allow me to get caught up on chat here. Because I saw it going off. Alright, um, okay, like auto art is high-end in 118 scale, what is considered the same in 150 scale? Great question. Um, if you are talking about trucks, which I assume you, I assume you are, uh, WSI and Sword, in my opinion, made some of the best high-end 150 scale trucks. If you are talking about construction equipment, uh, and you're okay with 148 scale instead of 150 scale, CCM has made some incredible brass models over the years. I'm happy to have most of them in my collection. Um, but those are the those are the two I would say for, for trucks and construction equipment are, are the best. You can't beat those. Okay, back to chat. Pull it back up here. It's being impossible. All right. Walmart used to be good for finding die cast. I agree. Not so much anymore, especially if you collect Hot Wheels or Matchbox. Good luck. Tactical. Okay, what display cases do you have? Uh, I'm planning on buying the Carnegie plastic ones. I don't have any of the Carnegie ones in my collection. I have a lot of um, goodwill, <laughs> literally, display cases. Um, the display cases that I have are secondhand, thirdhand, whatever. The only ones that I have bought new are the ones that have all the military vehicles up that are hanging on the walls. Maybe you guys have seen those. If you haven't, somebody remind me towards the end of this video and I will walk you over to them so you can see them. But uh, again, please, somebody hold me hold me accountable for that. All right, Rogue says, little too late already, spent over two grand in models. <laughs> haven't we all? I've easily spent two grand in models uh, recently, as a matter of fact. So there you go. All right, let's finish up with the collection here. The 1 to 1 60th. Again, if you guys are just joining us and you haven't already caught on, I am showcasing my small collection of N-Scale 1 to 1 60th trucks and heavy equipment in various stages of completion. Here is the 3D printed Cat D11 Next Gen Bulldozer. This is a... Um, this is a 3D printed kit that I bought off of eBay. I, I shouldn't say kit. It's a ready-made model that you have to paint and decal. 
The decals don't come with it. I made those myself. I know they're not prototypical and they're not totally correct as in the back that you're seeing now says D11. That should be a Caterpillar logo. I know. I get it. Hey, we're, we're trying to imagine things here a little bit. Nothing moves. It is a static 3D printed model, but as a stand-in, it looks quite good. Rogue, thank you for the super chat. He asks, do you think that CCM will be making more 148 scale CAT 6060s? I know that they're making the 6090 in white. I don't believe that they're going to be making any more 6060s. Normally, the, when they release a model and they sell out, they're done. Really, the only exception I've seen of that recently is the 6090, and that's not even the same model. They did the yellow one, that sold out, and now they're doing a white one. I will say, if you want the white one, get your pre-orders in, um, because I know they're going very, very quickly, and most all of them, if not all of them, are already accounted for. But thank you for the question. Awesome question. Hello, Parker. Thanks for joining the group. He asks, hey, man, did you get the Aether and Freightliner picks? I have not gotten those yet. Um, I've been a little bit busy, so I will try and check my messages after this video if I remember. All right. We're going to be on 3D printed stuff for quite a while here. Here's a uh, 7 again, in various stages of completion. So uh, please don't hold me, hold me to this. Obviously, I have to tidy up the wheels. And uh, what sucks about these 3D printed models is... If they are printed in one piece, which most of these are, you're, you're kind of limited as to what you can detail and do, especially at, at this small of a scale. So this, this truck obviously looks enormous to you, but it is actually very, very small. Uh, here's, a, here's a Sharpie pen cap next to it. There you go. So in terms of doing a, an interior, it's hard to do uh, hydraulic lines for some of the equipment that require hydraulic lines. Difficult to do, if not impossible. And uh, I'm just not quite there yet. From the same 3D printed seller, how about a water truck? Again, I've done the decals for this. This one actually does come with decals, but I didn't use them. I made my own for the mega water tank. Uh, you can see the spray bar in the back there, the black spray bar. Again, nowhere near done. Lots to do on this. Uh, and I have to find where the other half of my access stairs for that side went. It seems to have uh, taken off, so got to find that. Okay. How about a 3D printed skid steer and end scale? You want to talk about tiny? That's tiny. Again, nowhere near completed. There's your cap lid for size reference. Again, a static model where nothing works. This one I am quite pleased with. Again, not finished, not done, but this is a, a Caterpillar bogey skidder. Uh, probably a, I don't know, maybe a 545, maybe something a little bit bigger than that. Haven't quite decided. Need to measure it out and then consult the reference photos to see what this more accurately would be represented by. All right. Next. A GHQ white metal kit, pewter kit, Britannica pewter kit of the Caterpillar 120 grader. So there you go. Let me get caught up on chat here momentarily okay saw some die cast in costco nice might have to check that out i got the erdo prestige western star mixer that's a good model glad you got it uh parker asks isn't this 187 no none of these models are 187 uh n scale is all right this 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 gets a little annoying and complicated. So N scale in the rest of the world, as I understand it, is 1 to 150th scale. N scale in the United States is 1 to 160th scale. So anywhere in between, they're, they're so small to me, honestly, it doesn't make that much of a difference. I mean, it probably would bother me if I cared that much about getting the scales correct. But uh, yeah. Because I know if you look up some of the Tomatech models or you look up... You know, some of the, I think it's Kato is another company, Japanese company. So that they will say their end scale is 1 to 150th, but our end scale is 1 to 160th. So, hedge your bets, I guess. Anyway, this grader I did custom paint. I did do up the decals for. I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. It is a vintage Cat 120 road grader. So it's painted in the vintage highway yellow. All right. Something a little bit newer. Another GHQ kit that I have painted and done the decals for. This is a 631E wheel tractor scraper. In order to get this to look halfway decent, I ended up having to glue a lot of the parts. So you can make yours functional. You can make the, the apron open and close. You can make the, the bowl raise and lower. Honestly, again, for what I'm trying to achieve with setting up a small display at, uh, at this 
uh, this upcoming Springs train show near me, which is focusing on N-scale, the N-scale meet, this is going to do what I need it to do just fine. Because I will probably make a little diorama where this is emptying some dirt out. All right. Let's get into the really, really good stuff. Save the best for last. And if you know me, you can take a guess what that category of vehicles is going to be. Place your bets. Paving stuff. Another GHQ kit. Uh, this is the CAT CB534 tandem vibratory drum asphalt roller. Assembled, painted, detailed, and custom decals created and applied by yours truly. Back to the chat. All right. Um, looks like you guys are still discussing N scale and HO scale. All right. Roke says, okay, to put in to buy the white CAT 6090. Yeah, I, yeah, I did too. I think we're going to love that model, though, guys. I really do. I have Your next question is going to be, when is it going to be here? I don't know when it's going to be here. I would imagine probably sometime after Chinese New Year. So maybe March, maybe April. I don't know. I would not expect it any sooner than that. But who knows? We could be surprised. Okay, next to a locomotive, you wouldn't be able to tell. I agree. Next comment, I also have an N-scale layout. Trust, this hobby is so much cheaper. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree. Unless you're buying a whole lot of N-scale trainwork stuff, then uh, then it may not be a whole lot cheaper. Okay, Parker says he wants a 187-scale train set in his new house. I have several. I just don't have them set up at the moment due to space limitations. And then Parker says, can you bring out some 187-scale trucks later? I will try. Again, please remind me. But we got a few more things to get through first. All right, that's the roller. This turned out awesome. I don't often pick, uh, pat myself on the back because I would not consider myself an A-class model builder. But this one, including the hand and grab rails, just turned out awesome. I love, I love the way this looks. Okay. Next up, we're going to end with three 3D printed models that are finished, done, completed. Starting with the CAT PM825 Cold Planer, next gen. Uh, this model and the two after it, are from a seller on uh, Shapeways called TYD. I actually have all three of these models in 187 scale as well that I bought from him. So I just went back and bought these in 1 to 160th scale to have some paving equipment. To my knowledge, there really isn't any proper end scale paving equipment, um, at least U.S. style. So obviously I had to go this route if I wanted to have some stand-in models for the collection. There's the coal planer. By the way, if you want to see what that looks like next to a dump truck... See if we can do this here. Maybe we'll have to cheat just a little bit. Hang on. There we go. So it looks good. It sits about where it should. Uh, the only thing I don't like about the casting, which again, if I get creative, it doesn't come with the, the drum. In fact, there's just a hole there. You guys can see that. But if you have it displayed, you're not going to see the bottom of it anyway unless you're displaying a horrific accident. All right, next, Cat AP655 Paver. Another model I think turned out great. Um, and this is the one I said that uh, um, looks great next to my dumping dump truck, which I'm trying to scan and find. Here we go. Wish you guys could see the rest of the table at the moment. There's stuff absolutely everywhere. There you go. There's what those two look like. They complement each other quite well, I believe. And the last of the paving equipment, and the one that I have most recently finished. I don't know if I posted pictures of this yet, but if I didn't, you guys are going to get the sneak peek. You're going to see it. The Cat RM, what is this, RM500B, another one that I have in HO scale. Uh, this is at an N scale. Soil reclaimer slash uh, soil stabilizer. Road reclaimer slash soil stabilizer. Again, with the cab, the enclosed cab on these, you kind of have to cheat a little bit and make it look like the windows are reflective, which is what I've done. Um, but other than that, I think it looks great. The only other thing I could ask, again, is that the drum would have been modeled, but that's all right, I guess. All right, let's get caught up with chat. Uh, the roller looks good. Thank you, Parker. I appreciate that. Rogue says, wow, that's a great looking print. I agree. Thank you. Hello, Daniel. Thanks for joining the group. There is a Peener container crane on eBay, right? The one MCM reviewed are the Cat Micro Minis in scale. Sorry, a little bit confused on what, you, uh, on what you're asking there. 
Uh, Rogue, thank you again for the super chat. You know of any good service trucks with Crane? Uh, well, the Sword Peterbilt is a excellent model. If you can find one, I would go on eBay. Um, the Sword Mechanics truck, service truck. They've done it in a variety of different colors. I know they did it in Kokosing, which is really popular in my part of the world. That's a huge construction firm here in Ohio. And if you travel up 275, 71, 75, chances are you are going to see Kokosing equipment. Um, so that was a natural fit for Sword, which is based in Berea, Ohio. I'm going on and on. Anyway, that's one of the companies. Uh, All Crane is another one, and then they've done them in, in plain liveries. I've seen them in white, I've seen them in red, I've seen them in black. Something a little bit more affordable uh, is the, the Norscott Cat Peterbilt service truck. I say I hesitate to say affordable because that was like $25 when it first came out. Now you're going to spend over $100 on the secondary market uh, if you want to buy one of those. I can't really think of any other service trucks that come immediately to mind. I know First Gear did, uh, did one several years back. I think it was an international Durastar but I don't remember it being particularly well-received by collectors. I know I don't have one in the collection, so I can't tell you if that has a working crane on it or not. Thank you for your question. Hope my answer helps you out. Long story short, if you look up, if you have the means and you want to get the best out there, look up the Sword Mechanics service truck. Uh, that's the one I would recommend you pick up. Okay, going back to chat. Thank you, guys. Looks like there's 12 people in the room, which is awesome for me. Thank you. Uh, all right. Rogue says, wait, I live in Ohio on 30... You live on State Route 32, huh? Well, you're not very far from me, then, depending on where on State Route 32 you are. Uh, okay. Roger Mays, are any of this close to 164 scale? No. None of these models you're seeing here are anywhere close to 164 scale. As a matter of fact, I can demonstrate that very clearly for you, if you bear with me a moment. So here is a 164 scale green light dually Ram pickup truck. Next to the N-Scale Soil Reclaimer, which is a massive vehicle. So, no, I would say that these are not anywhere close to 164 scale. But good question, though. I appreciate it. Uh, Williamsburg. Yeah, you're not far away from me at all. Maybe 20, 25 minutes. Uh, all right. Cole. Tommy, will you be doing a review of the 150 scale Hitachi 890? Uh, just wondering because I'm getting one for my 15th birthday. Well, happy early birthday, and thank you for watching few more years before you can really start enjoying life. Uh, no, I have no plans to get the Hitachi 890. If I somehow get my hands on one, it will be because uh, some one is either gifted to me or a, uh, a company I work with wants a review done. But I, I don't plan on spending my money on that. I've got way too much stuff coming with CCM and Diecast Masters to even worry about Hitachi. But I appreciate the question. Okay, uh, Daniel, the Peter is a multi-jack style machine in 187 scale. It's very cool. All right, I will have to check that out. So thank you for that. By the way, if you want a different piece of equipment, let's say you're not really familiar how big these are, let's put an excavator by it. There's a 315 excavator. So you can tell, you can tell that, um, no, it doesn't scale out anywhere close to uh, 164 scale. There you go. Okay, we're already at over a half hour. Good Lord. Sorry, guys, talking your ear off. Um, I told you I'd bring you over to the display shelves, so I will do that. Try and look away. This might get a little dizzy for some of you. So this display cabinet with the 160, or excuse me, now you got me saying 164. The 187 scale cat stuff. This is one I got from Goodwill. Um, this is one of my favorite ones, actually. There's me. Hi, world. Uh, I am still going through and trying to organize this. I mean, there is some semblance of organization, believe it or not. Like, this shelf is paving equipment. This shelf is scrapers and some track loaders and assorted stuff, like pipe layers. Down here, you have large mining equipment. Which, if you guys have not seen the Diecast Masters Cat Catalog that was released about a week or so ago, you can look forward to this model. Where is it? This model over here being released in white and 187 scale. Pretty excited about that, personally. We've got some loaders down here. Some more large mining trucks down here. Again, I apologize if this is making some of you very dizzy. Got the graders up here and trucks in the background. There's my 24H that's 3D printed. That looks absolutely awful. Still working on that to make it look halfway decent. And then here's some more large dozers and wheel dozers. All right, you guys want to see the stuff mounted on the wall? Let's, do, let's go ahead and do that. Here's where I keep a lot of my other stuff. This is, believe it or not, 
all organized. Um, yeah, you can see the, you know, the green tape <laughs> tells me what's behind it. So, uh, I can try and, I can try and find stuff somewhat easily. A lot of you are saying, holy mother of God, and you can't believe it like uh, Rogue is. But, um, this isn't even everything, guys. Like, this is what I have here. This isn't my off-site storage unit, which is packed. I've been collecting for over 30 years, and I'm 33 years old. So, there you go. Some of that stuff. Boxes for 187 stuff. You're way low at 75 grand, Parker, but I appreciate it. There you go. All right, let's go over to the wall mounts, as promised. By the way, get one of these dehumidifier. If you have, you, you can see my basement is finished, obviously, which is where I am. That's where I do my videos. But you would be amazed, even in a finished basement, how well um, dehumidifiers work. So a worthwhile investment. All right, here's the wall-mounted display cabinets you guys were talking about wanting to see. Um, again, there is some order here. This is like Vietnam-era into cold war era uh versus some just random stuff i have here that has absolutely no place yet <sighs> up here apologize about the light you've got your cargo trucks fuel trucks hemets here you have your cougars top shelf your uh, jltvs middle shelf humvees more humvees the husky mine detector vehicle the buffalo behind that and then the hemet air force rescue fire truck Moving up here, again, not really ordered and organized yet. Oh, we have some more Hemets. We have the Guardian, uh, Strikers, and LAVs, which is a vehicle the Marines use, LAV-25s. M113s, 577 um, MLRS, a model I just finished. And... The tanks, Bradley's, uh, armored recovery vehicles, the Paladins. There's an armored breaching vehicle called the Shredder. There's the front of it. There's a 3D printed Bradley. There's a Wolverine, which is the, the new armored bridge laying vehicle on the Abrams chassis. Uh, it's called I think it's called an M1074. Basically the Wolverine. All right, those are those shells. So let me go put you guys back down. If you're wondering why, I know it's going to come up, it probably has already in the questions. If you're wondering why the bottom layer is almost completely covered with cardboard boxes, well, you obviously don't own a kitten. So that is covered so that the kitten doesn't jump on the shelves, because that's what he likes to do. Because he's an a-hole, but I love him to death. Okay, put you guys back down. Let me get caught up on chat here. Really appreciate all you guys joining. Um, I really do this channel for you guys. So, as long as you guys are enjoying it, I will try to keep doing this. All right. Uh, how do you get all these models? You work very, very hard. And you have a unhealthy obsession with scale models is how you get all these. Uh, Rogue says he's a school bus driver for West Claremont. No kidding. That's awesome, man. Very small world. I actually went to... I'm a graduate of Glen Estee, which, as you know, isn't even there anymore. Sad story. Uh, Cole, thank you for the birthday wishes. I'm happy to be able to be watching one of the streams. I'm happy you're here watching it with us. Daniel, unless you want to depict someone that makes mini-sized road construction machines, they will work like fairground ride construction equipment. Uh, Rogue is shocked at my collection. I'm shocked at my collection, too. Um, how do you get all this without filing for bankruptcy? Again, same answer. You work very hard, and you put yourself in a position to be lucky a time or two. And this is my passion. This is what... Literally, I love more than life. This is what makes me happy. Um, I'm not married. I have no kids. That helps, too. Especially the older guys that are watching this. They understand that. Okay, do you have a Diecast Masters 187 scale D9T? Uh, I think so. Somewhere. Whether it's here or not, I don't know. Let me see. I've got the Norscott one. Will that suffice? Very, very little difference. Other than, <clears throat> other than the, uh, the Diecast Masters one. Has an anti-glare finish, and this is all cat yellow. And the Diecast Masters one also has everyone's favorite operator figure that we all know as Bob the Builder. So this is the North Scout one, which is obviously all cat yellow. I do have the Diecast Masters one, but it's not here. So I hope that this will suffice. All right, going back down through chat. 
Um, okay. He's just a cat. Yes, he's a, he's, the issue is he's a very intelligent cat and he knows what he's doing is wrong. And he, if I'm not giving him attention or have his undivided attention, then he will act out and do things. I'm actually surprised that he's not down here because typically when he hears my voice, he, he likes to make himself known. Uh, by the way, have you bought any more FDNY? No, not yet. Same thing with NYPD. Haven't really focused on that as much as I probably should be. You must have a good job because you have... Yeah, I, I have... I'm very fortunate. I've had a great career and I have a wonderful job. Okay, I won one by mistake. I didn't look at the scale and was wondering if you live in Eastgate, I'll meet you somewhere. Yeah, uh, message me on Instagram, dude, and we'll we'll work something out. What's your most recent 187 scale truck, Parker asks. Good question. I happen to have it on the table. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you already know what this is, but here it is. The uh, white classic construction models Klein fuel and lube truck, which is based on a Caterpillar 777D body. Gorgeous brass model. I do have the yellow one of this as well. I didn't see myself trying to pursue a lot of the white models until very, very recently. So I hope to be able to uh, add maybe a handful of the white models to my collection. Again, they're just, they're really expensive and uh, they're, they're hard to get. So I got to be careful. You know what? I just realized I forgot to show you guys an N-Scale model. So we're going to say goodbye to him for a moment. Oh. You have no idea how close I came to just dropping that on camera. Forgot to show you this guy. So here's my uh, CS56 roller compactor, smooth drum compactor. Another 3D printed model that I have painted in detail. Even tried to decal the black background for the venting. So there you go. I think that looks pretty good. Okay. Um, back to the questions. Oh lord, I have a dog. My dog Smarty gets annoying. Yeah, I can't have a dog. I'd love to have a dog, but a cat is a bit much for me. Uh, how about semi-trucks? Yes, I will bring out some 187 scale semi-trucks, and then we'll get pretty close to ending the video. So, what do I have here? Well, here's a low boy that I happen to have, because I was just using it for a different video. We're going to get rid of the table, because they're not going to fit on here. Kenworth, cab over. I think it's a K100 with a, uh, a low boy style trailer. See what else I have. All right, here's a couple more. These are by Trucks and Stuff. Both of these, Freightliner Cascadia with a possum belly trailer. This is a nice model, actually. I like it. And then we have a Kenworth. I don't know, maybe a T600. I have no idea. T600, T680. With the U.S. Express livery. I like this model because you don't see this a lot. The aerodynamic kit added to the trailers, which you see in the real world a lot. So that's why, really, for no other reason, that's why I wanted to add this model. So, there's some 187 scale trucks. I will finish with the comments, and then we will end. Um, by the way, you can make a forestry service collection... I have a 187 scale forestry collection. I wouldn't call it a collection. It's less than eight vehicles. But if you look up my YouTube channel, I think it's under the HO files. But look up forestry service and diecast emporium. It'll come on. All right, guys. We're nearing 45 minutes. I think that's enough for today. No, we were a bit all over the place. But I appreciate everyone for joining in. And thank you for the super chats. That is wonderful to see. It makes me want to do even more of these. If you guys want to see more things... Maybe send me a message on Instagram, and I will, if I remember, that's the biggest part, uh, I will start comprising a list. So next time we do a live stream video, I can have a list going of things that you guys want to see. That'll give me time to dig it out and, uh, and all that other fun stuff. So, All right, that'll do it for tonight. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, take care, be well. Be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe here if you haven't already. And have a good weekend. I'll talk to you soon.